In Isaiah 9-6, Isaiah prophesied about the birth of the Messiah, and the New American Standard Bible translated his words this way, For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Depending on how you read it, the Messiah is called four different names here. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, and Prince of Peace. Now, no one has any problem calling the Messiah Wonderful Counselor or Prince of Peace. But for those of us who, after carefully studying the Bible, believe that only the Father is God and that Jesus is not actually God, but is rather the Messiah that God has brought into existence through the Virgin Mary, we find it difficult to call Jesus Mighty God and Eternal Father. Even Trinitarians have a difficulty with this verse. According to Trinitarian theology, Jesus is not the Father. Jesus is not the same person as the Father. So it would be incorrect to call Jesus Eternal Father. So what's going on here? What did Isaiah mean when he called the Messiah Mighty God and Eternal Father? To find out, let's look a little closer. Well, firstly, it's possible that these aren't four different names for the Messiah. It could be that the first three titles or names are for God, and the last one is for the Messiah. In fact, the stone edition of the Tanakh, which is an Orthodox Jewish translation of the Hebrew Scriptures, they translate this verse this way. They attribute the first three titles to God and the last to Messiah. This is how they translate it. For a child has been born to us, a son has been given to us, and the dominion will rest on his shoulder. The wonderful advisor, mighty God, eternal father, called his name Prince of Peace. So they are attributing the names wonderful advisor as they're translating it, mighty God and eternal father to God, and then the last title, Prince of Peace, to the Messiah. This would actually solve the problem. But let's assume that all four titles are names for the Messiah. What do the titles Mighty God and Eternal Father mean when referring to the Messiah? Well, firstly, the title Mighty God is the Hebrew phrase El Gabor. And there's actually no reason to assume that this phrase actually refers to God Almighty. Now, clearly, whoever is being referred to here is called God. However, in the Bible, there are actually several times when people other than the Lord are called God. For example, Moses in the book of Exodus, and the judges of Israel, and the Davidic king in the Psalms. So the term mighty God probably refers to the Messiah being God's mighty representative, particularly with regard to fighting against Israel's enemies. Why is this the case? Because this verse is speaking to how there will be a future son and the government will rest on his shoulders. This speaks of someone who will reign over Israel and will defend her from her enemies. So the first term, Wonderful Counselor, and the term, Mighty God, most likely refer to how the Messiah will rule over the people and will strategize against her enemies. Even so, what exactly does the title, Mighty God, mean? Well, the Net Study Bible, the New English Translation Study Bible, states this in their notes. The title, Mighty God, portrays the king as God's representative on the battlefield, whom God empowers in a supernatural way. They go on to say that when the king's enemies oppose him on the battlefield, they are, as it were, fighting against God himself. So Jesus is Mighty God in that he represents God, especially as it relates to defending Israel against her enemies. And what about the phrase eternal father? Well, in the way that it is translated in the New American Standard Bible and in most translations, the word eternal is seen as an adjective. But some have argued that it should actually be translated as a noun. In other words, the title should be not eternal father, but father of eternity. Along these lines, the Net Study Bible notes this, Isaiah and his audience may have understood the term as royal hyperbole, emphasizing the king's long reign or enduring dynasty. 
So Jesus is the progenitor, if you will, the producer, the one who produces an eternal reign or rule that will result in peace. And this is why he is then called the Prince of Peace, since he will administer peace for all eternity. So with all that in mind, let's look at how the New European Version translates this verse. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Divine Warrior, Father of the Eternal Age, Prince of Peace. Indeed, understood in context, there's actually no reason to think that either title, Mighty God or Eternal Father, actually teaches that Jesus is God. Instead, Jesus is God's mighty or divine warrior who is the father of eternity. Jesus is the one who will produce an eternal age which will begin when Jesus returns and establishes God's kingdom on the earth. For more videos, click on the subscribe link or you can visit youtube.com slash Niagara and you can click on the subscribe link there. Hit that thumbs up button to like this video. Also subscribe to our church's YouTube channel, youtube.com slash gladtidingscog. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash messianicniagara. You can email us at contact at messianicniagara.com. And of course, visit our website at messianicniagara.com. Thank you to all those who have recently subscribed and stay tuned for more videos. And please share these videos with others. Thanks for watching.